Have you ever wondered what plasma really is? What is the difference between cold plasma and hot plasma? Then welcome to See the Pattern and Plasma Simply Explained. Plasma comes from the Greek word meaning moldable substance. It is the full state of matter and it was first described by the chemist Irving Langmuir in the 1920s. Plasma has properties and behaviours unlike any of the other states. Plasma can exist in a variety of different forms. The main characteristic of plasma is a separation between the charges of the atoms. The positive ions are achieved by stripping away the electrons orbiting the atom's nucleus. The more electrons that are removed, the stronger the density of the ionized matter becomes. In simple terms, the charged nuclei are suspended in a movable sea of electrons, much like the electrons freely flowing within a copper wire. Plasma is an electrically neutral medium of unbound positive and negative particles. Any movement of the particles will create a magnetic field within the complex electric field surrounding it, which in turn will affect the other particles surrounding it. Three main factors define plasma. The first is how closely packed together they are. The closer packed they are, the more a particle's electric field will be shielded from the particles outside those that are directly surrounding it. The second is, if the particles are not closely packed together, then this screening effect is low and it will mean that the interactions in the bulk of the plasma are more important than at the edges. And this is one of the conditions that must be satisfied in order for a double layer to be formed. The electron plasma frequency is the third one. Higher values mean the electrostatic interactions will dominate over the ordinary gas interactions. Now as the matter is charged, it feels both the influence of an electric and a magnetic field. It is the most abundant form of matter in our universe, unless of course you believe in dark matter, but that's a totally different story. Plasma temperature can be measured either in electron volts or Kelvin, and as the temperature rises in a gas, the atoms will start to move quicker. For each atom, there are specific temperatures at which the outer electrons will be liberated, which will ionize the atom. And this is referred to as the ionization energy. Small atoms will require greater amounts of energy as the electron sits closer to the positive nucleus and therefore feels a much greater electrostatic force. Because of the larger difference in mass between the electron and the ion, there will be a difference between their respective temperatures, with the electron temperature generally being much higher than those of ion temperatures. If the temperature is low, then the ions and the electrons tend to recombine into their bound states, forming back into a neutral gas. So when does a gas become a plasma? For a plasma to exist, ionization must occur. The term plasma density only refers to the electron density and only a very small fraction of a gas needs to be ionized, around about 0.01% for it to be able to conduct electricity. Now plasma can be grouped into either cold or hot plasma. Hot plasma have electrons and heavy particles that are at the same temperature. In cold plasma, the temperature of the heavy ions and the neutral particles are much lower compared to the electron temperatures, much like you would find in fluorescent lights. Plasma consists of two opposingly charged particles and therefore there is a plasma potential. In most plasmas the actual potential will be far below this due to the shielding by other particles. But in special cases this can be overcome and there can be a large charge imbalance created in the form of a double layer. It is possible to have a plasma which consists of only one type of particle, for example an electron beam. So how does the plasma state differ from the gas state? Well plasmas have a very high conductivity in comparison to gases who generally act as very good insulators. 
all gas particles behave in the same way. They feel the influence of gravity and they collide with each other in the same manner. And in a plasma, the electrons, the ions and the neutral particles will all behave very differently. They will have different velocities and they will behave very differently when exposed to electric or magnetic fields. In a gas, collisions dominate their behaviour. The velocity curve, predominantly you see particles travelling at the average speed. But in plasma, collisions often do not dominate and electrically or magnetic phenomena can drive parts of the plasma to have speeds far exceeding the average. Also in plasmas, the particle interactions are not like collisions in a gas but are more like a wave motion and the electric fields ripple through this. Plasma behaviour is extremely complex, often with unexpected behaviour, and it cannot be described by simple mathematical functions of randomness. Often it is expressed in the term of a fractal format. Many of these unusual features were once studied in the laboratory, but are now seen throughout our cosmos. And we've looked at these a number of different times. For example, the filamentation structure that we see across the universe, Birkeland currents that we see both in the Aurora Borealis and on the Sun. Uh, we see Z pinches occurring uh, in plasma formations throughout the universe. So what types of plasma exist? We can break it down into four main categories. So the first is filamentation. So this is a string-like structure uh, that we see occurring in many plasmas, both in the laboratory and out in the universe, and are referred to as Birkeland currents. The second are what they term as non-neutral plasmas, and this is plasmas with a large imbalance of charge, or ones containing only one type of particles. The third is dusty uh, plasma or what they term as grain plasma and they are uh, a plasma that contain tiny charged particles of dust and these particles acquire high charges and interact with each other and again this is what we think uh, has been shielding some of our visibility when we talked in previous episodes about the uh, best studied dust ring and the fact that there was dust hiding around it and the fact that they didn't detect uh, as much plasma as they expected around Enclades was because of this sort of plasma. And the last one is what they call impermeable plasma. And this is a type of thermal plasma which acts like an impermeable solid. And you can actually physically push it. I hope this has given you a good insight and understanding into what exactly plasma is. But as always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.